Alright, so we're going to do part two now uh, with the same three bread rolls and the same four guys. Now you notice there's no symbol here or anything because we're going to get into liberal democracy, showing the difference between communism and democracy. Now, Noam Chomsky and other reformists like to believe that democracy would work if it were just a pure democratic election. So all of the people get to decide who gets the three bread rolls. How do you think that's going to plan out? I mean, first, obviously, they're going to vote for themselves, and then they're going to vote against someone that isn't popular. Who is unpopular? Well, that would depend on what the propaganda machine, known as the media, says is unpopular. In America, that would probably be the blacks and the Mexicans. In England, that would be the Muslims, etc., etc. Uh, you know, it comes back to fascism. It comes back to, uh, you know, the will of the majority is deeming that certain people are undesirables. So, guess what? The elderly, the sick, uh, you know, the children that didn't get good grades, they're all going to get screwed. And that is the problem. We don't even need to uh, talk about liberal democracy. Let's talk about progressive, progressivism, liberal progressivism. We'll just put a little LP up here. Liberal progressivism says, well, let's protect the minorities because they're always getting fucked over. Well, we come back to the same problem. Uh, in liberal progressivism, in England, it would be the Muslims who get the bread rolls first. In America, it would be the Hispanics that get the bread rolls first. And you come back to the same conclusion of separation of powers, of distinguishing, of, you know, identity politics. And, you know, that is the problem. That's why I don't uh, associate gays, gay rights with communism. I don't associate women's rights with communism. I don't associate any particular people's rights with communism. You can argue that you have the right to do those things, like homosexuality, which I don't agree with, but when you start saying that you're a type of person, you stop being a communist. But I could get into that in a different video. So we've talked about how pure democracy and liberal progressivism undoubtedly come back to the same problems associated with fascism, just not quite as directly, maybe not as violently or as, you know, vehemently. It's not going to do it as militantly, but the same problem. So, then we go into um, Marxist-Leninism. I'll put little lines here. What is Marxist-Leninism? Well, Marxist-Leninism is the idea of corporatism by the majority. Uh, that is a union of unions. So essentially everyone has market control. Now everyone is the capitalist and everyone has equal management over the three bread rolls. This might be a little better but it still comes back to the same problem. Now it's just going to be a war between all the unions of whose faction gets the bread rolls first. And that's obviously not going to plan out so well. Uh, someone has to get screwed over, either someone with the least amount of power, or someone with the least amount of membership, or something of that sort. So, what do we have left? Well, we have a dice roll communism. You don't see that too often nowadays, but you little dice up there. Uh, someone just randomly gets picked to get starved to death. Uh, this probably would be the most egalitarian form of communism ever. I've seen it in a few societies, but they don't last too long because guess what? People don't really want equality because the idea that they could starve to death just as much as somebody else does not bode well for most people. So while this indeed would be the purest form of communism, uh, it's just not practical, especially in a society of 300 million or some shit. So we might as well just scratch that out. So what is left? We have distinguished the left-wing factions, we have distinguished their ideologies and what they would lead to. Well, communism is a scientific theory, not just a political theory. The, polit the scientific theory of communism is that if these four people are working together, we don't have to have three bread rolls. We could collectivize our, you know, effort and our labor to make Four bed bread rolls. How about that? We could make five bread rolls, six bread rolls, bigger bed rolls. Do you, you, you see what I'm saying? I'm saying that under communism, under collective bargaining and collective ownership, the idea is that the means of production uh, could cause infinite productivity and we could have enough bread rolls to provide for everybody and nourish us and no one has to starve and we could all be well fed, yada, yada, yada. 
Uh, the problem here is that everyone believes that, oh, that's not the case. That under communism, somehow, magically, uh, p nobody will produce bread rolls, even though everybody needs food to survive. Someone's going to be lazy and just say, fuck that, I'm not going to work. I know I'll get my bread roll anyway. But that's not how human beings work. Proof is you go to work every day for nothing anyway. You know, you worry about poverty and you worry about being out on the street, but you're one paycheck away from that anyway. So what the fuck do you do it for? You do it because you have this sense of loyalty to your society, you have loyalty to your family, you have this moral um, shame that if you don't go out there and work, uh, other people will think less of you. There are many reasons why you work. Too many to worry about whether or not in communism people will just be lazy. That's ridiculous. So. When you come down to the collectivization of all product, you're undoubtedly going to have more bread rolls, and in turn, less people are going to get screwed over. Uh, you know, whereas opposed to the right wing ideologies, where someone has to get screwed over. The monarchs have to screw somebody over in order to retain their position of power. In order for people to worship them, someone has to get screwed over for them to say, oh, this works. Under fascism, uh, their entire ideology, ideology is based around the idea that some people are better than others, and that those inferior people should be destroyed, ignored, or simply, uh, you know, gone. They just don't want to deal with them. So they have no incentive. They have less incentive than the lazy to produce more bread rolls. And then under capitalism, well, the entire pur purpose is to control the market. So they're going to control the price of the bread rolls, and they're going to control how many bread rolls there are just to benefit them. We come back to that class hierarchy again. It's all interconnected. And that's what people are not understanding. That's why communism is not just simply, you know, waving a hammer and sickle flag and saying Russian words randomly. It is a political science. It is a complicated process. And that's why people bicker about it constantly. That's why you have Maoists and Stalinists and Marxist Leninists and Trotskyists and, and all this other shit because it is a form of science. It's a form of theoretical physics on human nature and human responsibility. And you're not going to solve that overnight, nor are you going to get perfection overnight. You may never get the perfect system. You, There might always be somebody that's screwed over. But the point of communism is not for just everybody to get along and everything to be perfect. The point of communism is to make sure the least amount of people get screwed over, whether that be because of racism, whether that be because of the class struggle of capital, whether that be because of government, and that's what a lot of anarchists argue, that government is the problem to begin with. Regardless of what your reasoning is, the entire purpose of the left-wing ideology is to say, well, instead of worrying about who has to get screwed over, let's worry about ways to make sure nobody has to get screwed over. And that might be a, an idealistic dream, but it's a dream worth having, as opposed to just scrounging at the bottom, surviving and plotting against your neighbor. So that's what I wanted to get across in this two-part video. I have about two minutes left, but there's no need. Uh, see you later.